Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video and the next one or two videos, depending, we're really going to be talking about the major blood supply to various muscles in the hip, the thigh, and the lower leg. So really the entire lower extremity. So I'm going to show you the major branching here, and then we're going to talk about the muscles that have, are supplied by each of these arteries. Now, one note before we go any further. This video is really designed to give you a very good framework for the branching that occurs with these arteries. Um, but one thing I will caution you with is that depending on the source you're looking at and depending on your instructor, let's say, some of these muscles... Uh, there may be less detailed, there may be more detailed, there may be some slight discrepancies. The point of this video is really just to give you that good framework so that you can learn whatever it is you need to. So pay very close attention here to the branches that we see because those are going to be consistent as we go across. All right, so again, we're going to start here with the descending aorta. So we're going through the abdominal pelvic cavity, right? And the aorta is going to divide into left and right common iliac arteries. Now, I'm only showing one common iliac artery here. There's, of course, a left and a right, and there's really left and rights on all of these, right? So we're just talking about one of them. It doesn't matter if it's the left or the right. This is just one of our common iliac arteries. Now, the common iliac artery is going to bifurcate into two branches, one of them which is not going to go into the thigh. That's the internal iliac artery. And then the other one, which does go into the thigh, is the external iliac artery. We're going to cover the internal iliac artery first. And the internal iliac artery itself is going to have two branches. It's going to have an anterior division and a posterior division. Now, with these two divisions, I have drastically simplified the number of branches. Because in reality, the anterior and posterior divisions actually each have three major branches. I only have two here and one here. And that's because all we're looking at here are the major muscles and their blood supply. The muscles, that is, in the hip and the thigh. So with the anterior division, this has two major branches for that purpose. Those are the inferior gluteal artery and the obturator artery. Maybe this should actually say obturator artery, right? And let's first look at the inferior gluteal artery. Now, hopefully you learn from the sacral plexus that the inferior gluteal nerve supplies a gluteus maximus. So it should be no surprise that the inferior gluteal artery also supplies the gluteus maximus. You can see it there on the top. But it actually does a lot more than that. It's also going to have other branches, just minor muscular branches, that are going to supply blood to, let's say, obturator internus, superior and inferior gemelli, the quadratus femoris, and the piriformis muscle. Okay. So these muscles, to some extent, are all supplied by the inferior gluteal artery. If you had to associate one muscle with it, though, I would definitely say gluteus maximus. Another branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery is the obturator artery. Now, the obturator artery is going to supply obturator internus, and it's going to supply the two gemelli muscles. Notice there is some overlap between these two arteries. The superior and inferior gemelli are supplied by both the inferior gluteal artery and the obturator artery. So there is overlap here. Same thing with obturator internus. Notice it's also up here. Now one very important bullet point that I wanted to emphasize is that the obturator artery also gives off this artery which is to the head and neck of the femur. Now there is another artery to the head and neck of the femur right here that's supplied by the medial femoral circumflex artery. These are different arteries right here. This one that branches from the obturator artery is different in the sense that it actually travels within the ligament to the head of the femur, also called ligamentum teres femoris. So if you've done any study of the acetabulum or the hip joint, you know that the head of the femur is actually attached physically to the acetabulum through this ligament. That ligament, however, is not for stability. Okay, it's actually a conduit for arteries and nerves and lymphatics to actually get to the head of the femur. And one of those arteries is actually the head and neck of the femur artery from the obturator artery. Note that the one that comes from the medial femoral circumflex artery does not, I repeat, does not move through that ligamentum teres femoris or ligament to the head of the femur. So hopefully that makes sense. 
Over here we have the posterior division. Again, the one major branch there of the posterior division that supplies muscles is the, is the superior gluteal artery. Now again, from the sacral plexus, uh, hopefully you remember that the superior gluteal nerve innervates glute med, glute min, and the tensor fascia lata. So it should be no surprise that the superior gluteal artery supplies blood to the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, tensor fascia lata, same three muscles there, and also the piriformis. Notice the piriformis is supplied by both the superior gluteal artery and inferior gluteal artery, so we get some more of that overlap between them. Okay. Now, the major reason I didn't put the other arteries in here that are part of these branches, or divisions, I should say, is because they're mostly supplying blood to structures within the pelvic cavity, which we're not talking about here. We're talking specifically about the hip musculature and the thigh. So that's your internal iliac artery. That's one branch of the common iliac artery. The other branch is the external iliac artery. Now this artery is going to continue down into the thigh, and it's going to pass under this structure called the inguinal ligament, also called Pupar's ligament. And when the external iliac artery passes under the inguinal ligament, it simply changes names to femoral artery. So the femoral artery is not a branch of the external iliac artery. It is simply a continuation of the external iliac artery. It simply changed names once it crosses under that inguinal ligament. Now the femoral artery obviously continues further down into the thigh, and we'll talk about that in, in more detail much later, but it suffices to say now that initially the femoral artery is gonna actually give three branches off. And those are gonna be the lateral femoral circumflex artery, the medial femoral circumflex artery, and the profunda femoris artery, also called the deep artery of the thigh. So first for lateral femoral circumflex artery. This one has three parts, an ascending part, transverse part, and a descending part. The ascending part is going to supply blood to the anterior gluteal region. The transverse part is going to actually anastomose with the medial circumflex femoral artery. So the transverse part is actually going to connect up with this artery right here. Then the descending part of this is going to actually join with the genicular anastomosis, which we will actually cover in the next video. So don't worry about this right now. But it suffices to say that the genicular anastomosis is really a network of blood vessels in the knee that provide an alternate uh, flow for blood whenever the knee is in extreme flexion. So for example, if you're stretching your quads and kind of sitting your butt on your feet, you know, you're bending your knees and stretching those quads, which is about as much knee flexion as you could get, you might compress some of the other blood vessels. Maybe the femoral artery might get compressed. You need blood supply down there. So this genicular anastomosis is going to provide that alternate flow of blood. Then we have the second branch, the medial femoral circumflex artery. This artery is going to travel between the iliopsoas and the pectineus muscles, and it's going to go to the head and neck of the femur. And remember that this uh, artery is not actually going within that ligamentum teres femoris, only the branch to the head and neck of the femur that comes from the obturator artery moves in that ligamentum teres femoris. And then the third branch here is the largest. This is the profunda femoris artery. Profunda, it's profound, it's large. It's also called the deep artery of the thigh. And this one is actually going to provide blood to the posterior thigh compartment. So we're mainly talking hamstrings, also a few of the AD ductors, particularly adductor magnus, may also be supplied by this, this vessel as well. And it's going to supply those muscles via what are called perforating branches. We'll cover that anatomy more in another video. But for now, just understand there are branches that actually come off of the profunda femoris artery, and they actually perforate through the adductor magnus, and they'll actually make it to uh, supplying various muscles like the hamstrings. There's normally four perforating branches. That's not too important now. But understand that this actually is going to supply the posterior thigh. And then the femoral artery itself actually is going to supply the anterior and anteromedial thigh compartment. So uh, the quadriceps are going to be supplied by the femoral artery. And then also um, some of the anteromedial muscles, so maybe adductor longus, um, maybe some of the more anterior of the AD ductors, they are also going to be supplied by the femoral artery. But generally with the, with the AD ductors, um, as you go more medial, um, you're going to get a little more contribution from the profunda femoris artery. As you go more anterior, they may, may be supplied more by the femoral artery. But again, this is just very general. 
Now the femoral artery is going to continue down the thigh and it's eventually going to um, move through the adductor canal. So we can more or less consider this part of the femoral artery right here moving through the adductor canal. This is actually a tunnel within the adductor uh, magnus muscle and when the uh, femoral artery emerges from the adductor canal on the other side it exits through a space called the adductor or adductor hiatus. So the adductor hiatus, remember, that's a hole in the very inferior or distal part of adductor magnus. And so it's the exit to that tunnel, that adductor canal. And so when the femoral artery exits through that hiatus, it changes names to popliteal artery. Now again, popliteal artery is not a branch of the femoral artery. It's simply a continuation of the femoral artery, but it's changed names after it crosses out of that adductor hiatus. Now I'm going to leave you with that in this video, and when we pick up with this in the next video, we'll talk about the popliteal artery. We will also uh, talk about this network of blood vessels right here, which is really the uh, genicular anastomosis, and then we'll talk about these three vessels right here uh, in more detail, and you can see some more detail on the next slide. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.